Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, good afternoon from England and good evening or good morning wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our sixth uh, webinar in our coach development series. Um, we're, we're delighted for, that you can join us and um, we've got a big one today for me personally as a goalkeeper or previous goalkeeper. We have Matthias Anderson and Nikola Marinovic who have uh, kindly given their time to, to join us and share some experiences of their, um, of their careers and also now Matthias working as a coach, so some uh, different perspective on, on the goalkeeper position. Um, just a few housekeeping rules, if you can keep your microphone on mute, that would be great. Uh, feel free to put your camera on. Uh, there will be an opportunity for questions at the end of the webinar where you can unmute yourself and speak. Uh, I've got my co-host Ricardo Vasconcelos with us who's going to be monitoring the chat. So if you want to ask some questions, feel free to put anything in the, in the chat box. And uh, if it's linked to the discussion that we're having at the time, it will certainly be raised uh, with, the, with the panel. Um, I'm going to pass over to, to Nico to give a quick introduction about himself and then Nico pass to Matthias when you're finished. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Nikola Marinovic. I, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I played 15 years for the Austrian national team, uh, seven seasons in uh, in Bundesliga. Now I'm um, still active, uh, and uh, I play in Switzerland in first division. And uh, yeah, that's for sure about me. Thanks, Nikola. You're very modest. Hi guys, Matthias Anderson here, um, former Swedish national keeper, now working as a goalkeeper coach in Kiel and for the German Federation, and uh, played uh, most of my career in Germany, played for 17 years there, and uh, yeah, that's a short one. Okay, thanks Matthias, it's great. Um, guys, we're going to kind of go through some uh, some clips that Matthias and, and Nico have pulled together from uh, from some tournaments, and uh, then maybe discuss some some details around uh, the important factors that come from each clip. Uh, Matthias, are you able to share your screen and, and kick us off? I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're sharing now. Yeah, we're starting with some with some clips uh, from the wing players. Just let them run by first, and then we'll talk about them later. Just so you guys know, the, the clips can be shared afterwards um, with you all so you can see them uh, without the, the freeze framing. Yeah, that was that about the wing clips. Uh, do you want to start, Nico? Yeah, you, you see this some um, uh, couple of different uh, angles from from uh, wing players, and uh, uh, I think it's uh, important. And the first two two um, shots are a quite a good good angle, and uh, I I uh, the the goalkeeper tried to be on on the on the hand. But uh, it's uh, it's a lot of space, and he can be a little bit offensive, maybe because uh, the first one was uh, actually was good. He he uh, he he stay on on his on wing player's hand, but uh, he he got a lot of space, and he got uh, the long long corner. Uh, the second one, uh, I think, uh, he is a little bit defensive. Because of that, and if he, if they move some uh, some legs, uh, the the whole uh, the whole uh, down uh, side of the goal is is open, and it's difficult to 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 save this this ball. You have to be uh, open. This third, this third is uh, really good because uh, he he is ready for the shot. Uh, now, what uh, what Matthias said uh, the 
uh, the, that's that's perfect. So he stay and uh, and then came the shot and you see the hand and then this is a reaction. That's uh, that's a really good good thing. Um, I don't know the second the the last two uh, are against Croatia. What I what I saw. Oh, no, no, they, they they say now in the in the first corner that was the same uh, because uh, I I I was also on this game. And uh, in the start of, of the game, as a Pilipovic on this uh, side, he stayed very, very concentrated. And uh, he was always what the most important thing is from, from the wing is that you are calm and that you stay already ready because, uh, before this, uh, the shot came, come. And uh, that was uh, good. Uh, the, the, second, the last two games, uh, the last two shots, uh, you are still the goalkeepers is still in uh, in movement, and uh, then uh, the the wing player can see that and can with the one uh, fast shot in in uh, first corner can can score. This isn't the, this two similar shots in the end. That's all. Yes. Anything to add on on uh, what Nico's? Uh, saying there, uh, just having a little bit of problem here with my share. No, uh, that's that's the the same thing. And the, uh, about the wing position is always uh, if we see the the many the four last clips uh, uh, where there's there's a normal angle, we have uh, just sharing it now again. Where we have a uh, first Pilipovic from the World Championship uh, against Denmark, where he stays very calm, he's on his feet, like like uh, Nico said, uh, moving with a with the player and making his uh, his decision late. And you see if the, he saves the first one, then in the long corner, and then in the second one he opts for for the short corner with a very good position when the when the shot is coming, where he stays very calm. He's very in perfect position and uh, doesn't have to be, make that kind of big movement. The last two ones we see by, by Eichberger, we see that um, he's, uh, he's constantly in move, movement. Uh, he's moving forwards all the time and, and it's not in a position where, where he's shooting. And that's very difficult. If you don't find the position before the player shoots, then it's much more difficult to react. Yeah, some of the key things I'm hearing there is uh, to be to be still and calm. Uh, on hand was Nico's words, so uh, I guess in in line with the the hand and the middle of the goal, you know, draw that line between the ball and the middle of the goal, um, and don't be a movement. So um, the important factors there, and that that of course is uh, constantly changing um, from the wing, depending on how much space the the wing defender is allowed or the situation that's happened. Guys, talk to me about how you train for those situations. Is there anything uh, uh, critical that you would uh, be looking for on that? Should I start or, or Matthias? Nico, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, that's that's uh, the whole secret. It's uh, the that's the timing of positioning. Uh, you you of course you have uh, two or three steps uh, with uh, orientation if you. If you have a contact with uh, uh, with the goal and uh, and just as a with uh, one one step as a go a little bit forward and you stay actually in the line uh, where the wing players jump from this position and if you stay in, in this position your your first your short corner is already saved and um, and then you 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 may you should make some small steps but fast steps to to keep to follow the the flight from from the wing players because uh, the wing players had also his problems to he 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 should catch the ball he should jump he should uh, watch on defensive players and uh, and that's the two three stuff they should do before they shot and uh, uh, before they shoot, and uh, and that's uh, that's your your possibility to to look better and to stay 
uh, stay pre prepared on this shot. That's uh, that's actually that you this first two or three steps makes good, and you stay calm and wait on the on his hand yeah. or his uh, position of arm or or upper body. Yeah. Thanks, Nico. Um, Matthias, I'm going to um, ask this question to you because uh, uh, Nico, remind me how tall you are. What's what? Your what, how, how, what's your height? I, I didn't. Uh, I'm uh, 198. 198. And Matthias, uh, how tall are you? 187. Okay, so a big difference in the heights, but two uh, top class goalkeepers. So, Matthias, would you approach it any differently to how Nico's described it? Because I know we're going to have some questions around height of the goalkeeper and all those things. Of course, as, as a bit of smaller goalkeeper, you have to be very much uh, more more uh, accurate in the positioning. Because if uh, I was a little bit off, or if a smaller goalkeeper is a little bit off, uh, going too offensive or something like that, then uh, you have a real problem. And you have to be quick on your reaction as well, because you don't cover that much of space. But uh, in the end, I think the, the positioning should be the same for a bigger or a smaller goalkeeper. Just the it's. Uh, a lesser, uh, uh, what is it, a lesser range for faults by a small yeah. goalkeeper. You have to be much more accurate, and uh, the wing shots are also one of the most difficult things I think for for every goalkeeper because the players today they are that skilled, uh, they are that physical, they are jumping far, they are jumping high, they have a lot of of a variation of shots, and uh, you sometimes you also have to to know that you can't uh, have all possibilities covered. You have to decide. What are they most likely to do? In which situation? Be a little bit prepared of that uh, from from before the game as well, because against the best players you can't cover all four co corners plus the trick shots. Then then you're just going crazy in, in your head, and then you're probably going to do so too much or too little. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, comes back to Guys. that day, staying calm. Ricardo, go ahead. You've got some questions from the from yeah. The just on that, there's a there's a question uh, who came up on the chat about uh, what you're describing and uh, Athena asks if you recommend to close down the space as fast as possible on the wing if you are smaller uh, I wouldn't what with if you mean getting closer to the to the shooter then I would say no because then you are also much more vulnerable for shots uh, above you and uh, that the player is flying past you so I would I would not recommend to be much more offensive just because they're smaller that's a little bit uh, old school and that doesn't work anymore the players are way too good for that yeah so uh another question who follows on that one uh would you recommend baiting the shooting space as in offering a side um so you can try to increase the the, the possibilities of prediction of where the shot will go yeah of course there's a possibility uh you can do that against certain players uh that's also always taken in consideration as well. If you want to bait them to do their favorite shot, or if you want to take away their favorite shot and leave them to do have to do something else. But uh, of course, you can play with a shooter as well to leave a corner open or do a little different in the positioning. Uh, there are many options for the goalkeeper as well. But I think the main thing is no matter what you choose, if you choose to stay on the hand or leave the far corner or the first corner open, you have to be very precise in the positioning because if you leave too much open, the players are way too quick and they, they will take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, and the last one for this bit. Uh, so, Kier asks, as a shorter goalkeeper, what would be the best way to prevent being lobbed? He says he often positions himself in such a way that he will save a normal shot, but... Uh, Still, taller players are, are, are able to lob, the, lob him. So, what would be your advice uh, for a smaller player to try and avoid as much as possible conceding a lob? Yeah, I think it will be about not, not to be too offensive. Maybe take, take another step back and uh, always to keep the, keep the feet on the floor because then you always can react as well. As soon as you leave the floor as a goalkeeper, then, then uh, you've lost in initiative, then you can't uh, decide any more, any more to do, then you have to just uh, get hit more or less. So try to stay on the floor as long as possible. Okay. Uh, guys, just before I let you carry on, there's loads of questions coming. I'm going to select a few that are to the theme and, and to keep you going. 
and then there's a few who are a bit off uh, what we're talking about, and I'll save them for, for the end, if that's okay. A bit more sure. generic. Yep. So just carry on, and I'll interrupt what, if and when. Okay, Matthias, do you want to move us on to the next round of clips? Yeah, moving on. Coming up, just sharing the screen again. First, so we have two two shots from the from the back, or so not really for back players, but uh, where the goalkeeper has to decide uh, if the player breaks through or not. Can take the take the wing shots later, uh, the back shots from the back later. We had the uh, going back to the uh, Nick. You can keep on talking if you want. I'll show the clips one more time. Yeah, of um, first two shots from from Sagosin as it's uh, he came into the nine meter with the uh, with defensive player on his back and. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the goalkeeper actually tried to be offensive in the last moment, but it's uh, he shot in that moment, and that was he's in, in movement. It's it's difficult because he came on the on the third player in the, in defense and middle block, and he shot over his head in the in the long corner. Yeah, uh, without without block. Uh, uh, it's it's difficult in this situation. Maybe you, if you say that uh, that uh, the, the defensive player don't go to blocks or contact, that you can choose his side. But it's it's difficult first situation. Second situation, this I think it's the middle block player stay good in the, in his um, uh, in the block, and uh, you should you should trust him and uh, should go in. Uh, uh, in, in your corner, in short corner. Uh, this uh, third and, and fourth uh, shot was was first was, was this breakthrough one from uh, from the from the pivot. The third is from the pivot. Yes, here's the the one in the middle, uh, and then we we're going on to the one here's first the pivot. Yeah, first the pivot. Uh, okay, he go down. Uh, he uh, pivot. Uh, uh, stay on the on the right side. It's not the best position. Uh, you should you should uh, watch where is uh, his uh, his hand and uh, that's uh, and that's you, you you should be late in, in reaction and to to stay. You can you can cut uh, his angle also. You can be offensive because it's a difficult situation from this position to to make as a lob and this breakthrough. Uh, the, the back player jump uh, on the outside between one and two, and uh, he had a black uh, block uh, player for him. I think it is in from this situation quite difficult to to get in a long angle uh, alongside of, of goal. Uh, you should be more calm and and to wait uh, that uh, if they. If they can uh, shoot as this long corner, and that's if they if the possibilities may be there, but he can shoot short uh, just just uh, down, and uh, you should you should stay more in uh, in first uh, in short angle, or you you can uh, yeah. give him a, a possibility to shoot there and to make as a like uh, like a wing player technique. That's. That's a for this 
for yeah here as well he's saying he leaves the, this leaves the the floor a bit too early and he's being yeah. uh, the player jumps past him uh because yeah that's that's the, that's the problem of a goalkeeper yeah yeah the player has such a speed has such a speed when the goalkeeper is attacking he's attacking to the player but the player is moving onwards to the to the short line to the goal line and that's why he gets a pass in the in the short corner Great. Do you want to go through the clips again, Matthias, or do you want to take any questions, Ricardo? You're on mute, mate. Uh, uh, we have a few questions, but they are more related to generic themes. I don't know if you want me to go over them now. Uh, they're not necessarily in, in relation to what you guys were just showing, essentially. But uh, there's a question here. A very interesting question uh, from uh, someone. Sorry, I'm just trying to. I'm getting loads of questions at the same time. I'm just trying to get it. So, uh, some people are asking if you could play the videos whilst you are talking to make it easier for them to understand. But the question I was uh, going to pose is the job of a goalkeeper changed a lot in the last years. They obviously are facing more shots, the 7v6, the higher speed. As a mental coach, I'm very interested in the time between two actions. So how to recover from a goal and to refocus, to get rid of thoughts and how to stay in the now, essentially. What would be your best advice uh, on, on that? I don't know if it makes sense, the question. Yeah, I think that's also a big um, experience thing. Each uh, goalkeeper uh, attacks that problem differently. Uh, for myself, I... I had no problem with it when I was younger. Then for some years, I found it very difficult to leave the, what uh, was happening behind me. So I had, I contacted a mental coach. Uh, I worked for him the last, I think the last 10 years of my career. That helped me a lot. But I think it's important to, um, to just as goalkeeper as well, to understand that you will be making a lot of mistakes in a game. It's impossible to play, play to nil. Uh, and that's why you have to to find a way to to close the last action as as quick as possible. Uh, if you do that with a mental check uh, in the head, say that was good or that was bad, or next time I'll do that, and then you leave it. Or if you uh, have some kind of um, of other thing that you do, or if you go to the bench and uh, talk with your uh, fellow goalkeeper, I think everyone has a different way to to handle these things. Uh, I don't know about you, Nico. Yeah, I, I think also that uh, this experience is a very big, uh, uh, that's the, the biggest uh, uh, plus in this uh, in this situation. Of course, you that handball is a fast game, and uh, you don't have a lot of time to to lose to uh, to say, okay, I, I make mistake. I, you know that you are making mistake, or you can be better, but. Uh, you should be concentrated on the next ball and uh, handball is a mistake game and uh, this the, the team or, or the players they make as a less mistakes they they won and uh, you have to you have to learn such such things uh, during the your career and uh, that's the communication is very important uh, also to to quote uh, assistant trainer to your colleague on the on the bench uh, to your defensive uh, uh, player as a middle block or something like this and and that's uh, now the combination between uh, mental and uh, and also tactic or something like this but if you if you have enough uh, experience you you should beat that problem thank you guys just another one before you carry on if, if that's okay, Bobby. I don't know if you want to intervene. I was going to just continue on the psych psychological theme for a moment. So if you're going to deviate from yeah, that. Yeah, go on then. I'll ask the next one. Okay. So no, no, no. Carry on. Carry on. Okay. So um, this is open to Matthias and Nico, whichever one has the, uh, wants to go first. In terms of the dealing with the mistakes, how important, Matthias, perhaps your role is as the goalkeeper coach now or, or uh, perhaps experiences that you both have had over your careers, how important is the relationship um, between the head coach, so not just the goalkeeper coach, the head coach, goalkeeper coach, and the goalkeepers? You know, 
how can the head coach get the best out of the goalkeeper even when? Because, you know, sometimes we see a goalkeeper making uh, zero saves from three shots and they're subbed out, you know, and things like this. How can the head coaches be supportive and um, yeah, get the best out of the goalkeepers? What do you think? I think that's also yeah. very individual. I think uh, many head coaches lack the the view of the goalkeeper. Uh, I noticed that uh, now as well when I'm uh, sitting on bench bench as a coach, the the perspective you have from the side is completely different than the one you have in the goal. Uh, when you're standing in the goal, you see everything from behind the defense. Uh, from the side, it looks completely different. Um, I think it's uh, always very important as well for for head coach to know the goalkeeper. I mean, we have keepers uh, maybe who wants to be shouted at or who needs a pressure. Where there are other ones that they need to be patted on the back and uh, and uh, to say, I know you'll have the next one. Uh, I think that's uh, the big thing is to to know your team, your your keepers, and uh, that you can interact them with uh, as 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 they want to have it. And Nico, anything from you? Yeah, I I think it's uh, I think. I think it's the uh, most important thing. It's, it's trust, uh, trust between the head coach and the assistant coach or goalkeeper coach. And the, on the and this and the, if the uh, goalkeeper coach is, is now, we say it's it's a new, it's a new uh, coaching. Uh, uh, point in handball and it's, I think it's very important. It's good that, uh, that Bundesliga make this uh, this uh, step forward and uh, you have as a goalkeeper coach on, on the bench because uh, he can uh, help uh, a lot of head coach uh, and uh, a lot of goalkeeper and, and this uh, you should have uh, some system or some trust and that's like Matthias said, it's very individual. If you have one Landin uh, in the goal, he had a lot of uh, trust or or confidence. And um, and then if some young goalkeeper came in, of course they they have uh, less time to to show what what happens. But uh, that's some process, and uh, you should earn also this trust and. Uh, <laughs> That's a, a difficult, a difficult uh, tale of of our job. Yeah? It's very difficult for the young goalkeepers to earn the trust when the results are arguably the most important thing, right? Yeah, but uh, it's 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 complex. It's it's defense. Uh, how you play handball fast, or you defensively good, or uh, it's 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 a lot of stuff. So you cannot uh, answer. With one, uh, with one answer. Sure. I, I, I think it's as well to take in consideration what kind of uh, goals the goalkeeper is conceding, and that's just to say that now we had three goals, so we had five goals, so we had seven goals. But yeah. as well to take a look at what kind of uh, goal did we concede? Was it the one that we, that the keeper, should be able to save, or was it the three counterattacks or what was it so that you need to get a, a level-headed decision making as well that builds the trust from both sides i think sure um and just continuing with the the theme of um the psychology side um I mean, you guys grew up playing playing handball and you got used to the the game from a from a young age but what advice can you give to the to the goalkeepers that are coming into the sport for the first time uh from a bravery aspect you know how can they have less fear when the ball is around you know coming towards their their heads <laughs> yeah that's that's good uh, stuff so you you don't have uh... <laughs> The fear is your opponent. Uh, you should have uh, the eyes open, and uh, that's uh, of course uh, such like this. This, but uh, I think it's uh, of yeah. You you don't have a, a lot of equipment. They, uh, they can uh, protect you, like in uh, I don't know ice hockey or or, or something like this. But it's. Um, yeah, it's it's. Um, I I think uh, uh, it's uh, some kind of uh, difficult uh, in different uh, schools. Uh, I think it's uh, Scandinavian school is is more 
defensively, and uh, they, it's, it's combination with with the six zero defense, and uh, you should more say from uh, from black back players and something like this, and then the uh, Balkan school was always with the three two one defense, uh, aggressive, and you should go up, and there's a lot of situation one against one, and. Uh, um, of course, it's it's also individual, but uh, if you are brave or not, or you go crazy uh, one steps or two uh, ahead or or not, but it's uh, um, you should be brave, or or you you don't have a success without the bravery in a, in a handball. It's uh, it doesn't matter in what position you play. You cannot. Uh, hide anywhere also to to get us a bit that's a that's a game uh, the ball is your is your opponent and you should save it and uh, sometimes you should ha- save with your head or and some sometimes hurt that's, Thanks, a, that's a part of the game yeah i think as well you can uh, when you have kids or younger keepers you can train with softballs it's all important especially for younger keepers that you don't uh, do the training faster than they can make it because if it goes too fast, they then they can't control their own movements and they don't see the ball. And of course, then you uh, you go uh, you have the problem of of getting a little bit scared of the ball. And I think that's just a a good way to to get young kids used to the ball to to make the t- uh, training in their in their tempo. Thanks, guys. Uh, I mean, uh, just in. in- yeah, in relation to that, there was a question that takes you one step back, if, if, if I may, uh, which is you're talking about when a kid decides to become a goalkeeper, how do you help him uh, to face that uh, bravery aspect of things or to improve the bravery aspect of things? Someone here is asking a question that goes before that. Uh, and the question relates to how would you convince a young player to become a goalkeeper to start with? Uh, so, because we know they're, they're, they're facing shots at, you know, uh, crazy speeds. Um, and, and how do you convince kids to become a goalkeeper to start with? I think it's a lot of bit to do about the... Uh, it's always been very high value. And uh, we always have a lot of kids that they want to be a goalkeeper. They want to, to play in the goal because it's, it's high value. And... Also because everyone know that it's a, just a high value to save a ball as to score a goal. Uh, and I think that's one way to go to get the kids to, to play in the goal, that you try to, to make it clear that it's just as important to save a ball as just to be counting the scores. Yeah. That's a great point, Matthias. Nico, anything from your experience on this one? Yeah, I, uh, I read for one year some interview with... Um, with Matthias, uh, ex-trainer, with uh, Finn Holpert, and uh, he works also with uh, with the German Federation, and uh, he said that it's, uh, it's a quite a big a big problem in, uh, in in Germany because the, you play uh, in the beginning uh, without without system in defense, and you play one against one, man against man, and uh, and you as a goalkeeper, you got a lot of. Uh, one and one against one situation, and probably you don't have also uh, quite a big success in this. Uh, and uh, that's motivation to for goalkeepers. It's uh, it's more to, more important uh, to to motivate to the young younger players because sometimes uh, the the trainer in young age uh, say, okay, uh, for, yeah, you you are too. You you the weight is too too big. You cannot run uh, go in goal because you are there's a big and uh, and uh, you make as a <laughs> so better figure figure in uh, in the goal and uh, that's uh, that's a, not a good uh, not a good uh, decision from from the trainer. I think it's uh, everybody should. Uh, should try this uh, position. That's uh, one complete the other role as a as a uh, field player and uh, field player. And uh, that's uh, yeah, that's, a, that's uh, 
as as uh, as Matthias said, uh, the value is is big in Scandinavia, and uh, I you you should have some uh, idol to to uh, to start to to be it. Like uh, like now, European Championship to sixteen, I think it's uh, Wolf makes a, a really good really good as a figure in, in this championship and. Uh, how many had uh, how many kids as a day they wanted to be a goalkeeper? You know, that's that is also important. It's a it's a nice uh, thing to to talk about. Is this uh, giving all the young kids an opportunity to experience different positions? And if they uh, maybe never had an idea about going in the goal and, and in one tournament they you know they rotate, you know they switch around. You never know. You might find uh, a, a goalkeeper that's. That's really, uh, yeah. That, that enjoys that position. That didn't really know that they would like it. That has uh, the mentality for it. That has the physical uh, capacity for it. Yeah, it's really interesting. But we don't know that unless we try it. Um, uh, but by mixing them around. Ricardo, anything else from the questions before we progress? Uh, there's a few more. Uh, there's one uh, that I think would be interesting. Following what you're discussing around, uh, how do you? engage with a coach that is not uh, paying the attention you think you deserve uh, when you're in a context of a club that does not have the means to hire a goalkeeper coach so how can you maybe you know make yourself heard when you're in a context where there's no way to have a goalkeeper coach and you have to, and it has to be your your head coach to help you yeah that's that's a difficult one and uh, it's all, it's it's like that they're very not very, not every club has a goalkeeper coach or not every uh, federation has a goalkeeper coach um i think it's always good to have a talk about it and you can always uh i think it's always interesting to ask the question how much uh, they think that the goalkeeper factors in on the results and uh after that you can take this from there but normally you get an an answer about 50 to 75 percent and if you take it from that i don't think many keepers get 50 to 75 percent of the training or the time in training so uh, maybe it's a good way to take it from there uh, nico anything from you uh, yeah well, matthias actually told everything <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> okay so guys, I wanted Let to go to the next question. Okay. So um, in terms of, we spoke a little bit about preparation before, and maybe we'll come on to things like um, studying the opposition after this. But um, I know from speaking to both of you that you take the fitness side of the game very seriously. Uh, Nico, especially now coming towards uh, some later years in your career. And I saw Matthias uh, a couple of seasons ago in Flensburg in his last, in his last season, really taking care of himself. Um, Give us some insight into what it what it takes to be a goalkeeper and obviously we have different shapes and sizes if you think about um, Milic for example who was in Varda you know different sizes and, and stuff but um, from from two guys that are taking it really seriously what can you tell the, the audience about that side? I think first what you say is a commitment uh, it takes uh, a lot of uh, mental strength to do the work that, that you have to do. Uh, you have to do a lot of the work and uh, you have to take care of yourself. And it's a, it's a physical preparation before a game. It's a physical preparation of summer. You have the mental preparation. Uh, the players often, they come to the video preparation before the game. They look at the videos with the coach and then they go, go play. And uh, the keeper maybe has another two to four hours at home studying videos. Uh, that's why it takes uh, a lot of effort. and. Uh, like Nico can say as well, I think the older you get, the more work you have to do to stay fit, uh, as well as before and after the games. Yeah, of course. As a, uh, you know, uh, you have more experience, and you know what what you have to do, what you, uh, what exercises you need, and uh, how much, and uh, you need. Uh, of course, as a re regeneration, but uh, it's uh, the work. Uh, Workout is uh, is very important. Uh, it depends, uh, of course, of your technique. Uh, that's uh, maybe my my advantage because uh, uh, the technique from uh, from Scandinavian goalkeepers and from Matthias is uh, even 
you you have to be even harder with the, with the training and uh, especially with the low balls uh, with the, with this technique and uh, yeah but uh, uh, you, you you know you sometimes hurts sometimes not but uh, you have to to switch your your train uh, your program training program and uh, and to do some stuff so that you make you make you better to to work also mentally better and um, you don't you, uh, also with the, with a the question one question before this mental preparation but i think it's a goalkeeper is the only position if you in the whole handball that you can your your tactic uh, your counter attack tactic or, or defensive tactic you can you can make if you have a one goal good goalkeeper behind and if they if they can as a good uh, passing game or or a good 6-0 with the black players you can you can not uh, do like like this as a with with some other with some um, other player in in our game okay. there's a there's a couple of questions here about specifics around um uh, the regeneration so how would we recover ourselves after after the matches is there I mean, you guys will have a lot of experience of tournament handball where you're playing, and even in the Bundesliga when you're playing so often. So it's such an important aspect to be ready to go for training and then matches uh, every couple of days. I think you have to find your own your own uh, kind of program. For me, it was always 10 to 15 minutes of cool down running in the arena after the game, then a good uh, stretching session. Uh, a little bit of treatment from the physiotherapist, and then you have to do some kind of evaluate and try to forget it because uh, the next day you have to focus on the next game. And that's the same if it's in the Bundesliga or if it's uh, in a championship. Uh, the games are coming that that quick, and you can't lose any time to dwelling on the last one. And it's easier said than done. It's uh, not. Uh, not really a little bit of less sleep after the game, but the next day you have to start preparing for the next uh, the next game, and that's also a mental strength that you have to to develop to be able to do that uh, every week in and out, and uh, that takes a lot of uh, commitment, like I said before. Yeah, I agree with it. Uh, that's uh, you, you know that uh, you it's not every player able to to do like this and to play uh, now Bundesliga or, or Champions League uh, and uh, in January world or European championship uh, that's uh, that's difficult you have to that's a process you have uh, uh, this mental strain is, uh, is is very very important they uh, not every player had, had something like this uh, I like to always uh, the tactic of uh, of Swedish national team that they um, that they change the goalkeepers every every uh, half half or or one game you and one game the other other goalkeeper because uh, in the tournament you have uh, you have more time to re regeneration and to and uh, in in a way that uh, that your colleague have not good game you you should go in and and, and to win this game and uh, uh, but uh, that is also the the question of of a system and uh, and uh, you that is a process you cannot uh, say okay i i i can do uh, uh, like like all big players and big teams uh, you should learn a lot of stuff so you should uh, train or, or or to uh, to do it as a, for yourself, and uh, you see if you are if you are good or or uh, less good in this. I I give one uh, uh, example. I think uh, the Austrian national team now in the European Championship, the, the second second guy uh, Eichberger uh, make us a great couple of games, but in the main round main round uh, he didn't uh, expect that he that he play a lot of, of games and uh, after two games in the, in the main round I think uh, 
he was uh, already gone. He don't have a. Uh, he was not focused anymore, and uh, he he's not used to 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 do every two days. That that was my opinion or my my sight from sight. I I don't know what what you mean. What you mean, Matthias? Yeah, that's uh, I think that's a discussion for for another time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that, that, that's a, that's a, that's experience stuff. For example, yeah, yeah. Um, guys, some really interesting stuff you guys are talking about now, and, and, and sticking with this theme of preparation, we've we've spoken a little bit about video and uh, knowing the players that we're, we're going to come up against. Um, do you think that there's maybe an over reliance on video and and trying to understand what the player's best shot is? Um, you know, given that you guys are facing world class players. Uh, on a regular basis, and is there any other maybe uh, cliches or myths around handball that you guys have uh, come across? I don't think there's that you can that it's uh, that, you, that that the keepers look uh, have to that they're watching too much video. I think you have to do it when you're playing against the best. You have to prepare with the video because the game is uh, so quick. The players are that good and you have to be prepared before. Everyone has their own way of doing it. Uh, I would never tell anyone to do it just like I did it because that was my way. Uh, I think Nico has his way. Every keeper has their own way. Uh, you can always, uh, I know if, as well, I know if when I played, maybe I had a game where I didn't make one extra save because of the video. But if nothing else, it's made me feel prepared before the game. And uh, I think that's an important uh, point to take away from the video preparation as well. That when the goalkeepers do that, they feel prepared and they have a better feeling going into the game. Uh, but uh, I think as well, you should never expect a player to do just that or he shoots only in that corner because uh, that's very rare that we have players that only does one thing. They, they are way too good for that. They have way too many possibilities so you have to be prepared for everything and that's that's a big part of it yeah Matthias said uh, a lot of good stuff so, uh, about that uh, of course so it's uh, it's individual stuff uh, how you prepare yourself for the, for the game uh, some some guys need more video sessions some guys less uh, but it's also uh, if you there's also experience uh, stuff to to read the game to to watch it uh, what what the what the back players do with play with uh, with your with your block together with uh, some stuff uh, that's uh, that for that it's video session not uh, not nothing special because if you if your block stay in a the long corner on his arm and he cannot shoot is over there. You should go in your corner. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Mikkel Hansen and she shoots it 10 times in a high, uh, high long, but it's uh, some stuff so that you should, you should read in the game. And uh, you, uh, because of that, you, you, that's not, a, I don't know, a video game. If you go, it's always left uh, high or, or right low and, because of that, that's a sport. It's a complex, and uh, you. Uh, but the most important thing is, uh, as, as Matthias said, uh, that you have a good feeling for a game. And, uh, you have one plan in your head. Bobby, uh, if I may, there's another question. Who can yeah. relate uh, exactly to what you guys were saying? Uh, this may be a bit, a bit more for Matthias, as he's uh, the, the goalkeeper coach in the room. Um, but obviously Nicola will have a different perspective, but in terms of tactical work, you're discussing your tactical work linked to the video observation. Uh, but also, you know, how, how high is your connection with the head coach? Because obviously, uh, I'm guessing, and this, you'll tell me if I'm right or wrong, and the question relates to that. Can, do you change the goalkeeper that would start the game in relation to the tactic that will be used by the coach in defence? Because the goalkeeper might might be better against a 6-0, another one against a 3-2-1. Um, and if so, how do you prepare the different moments tactically for the goalkeepers throughout the week? Yeah, of course. Uh, leading up to a game, uh, I have to take in consideration the training. Uh, I have to speak with the head coach uh, because I want to know what we're going to play, which defence. 
uh, obviously I know who we were playing against, and then you had to adapt the the training sessions uh, that you have for the keeper, the shooting sessions, uh, to prepare the keeper for what's coming in the game. And of course, you know as well uh, when you select the, the starting goalkeeper uh, together with the head coach, of course. But you always know uh, the situation of the keepers: which one uh, likes this defense, or which one likes this opponent, or which one is in shape or which one is in form. There are so many factors that you have to factor in. Uh, but of course, you have to know what, what the team is, is the whole team are doing and then you prepare the goalkeeper from that. Thank you. Okay, guys, we've got a few questions about um, uh, reading the game. Um, and we spoke a little bit about tactics and stuff like that. I'm going to bring it back to Matthias around from the coaching side of it. Matthias and Nico, you can obviously jump in with your response. But how has goalkeeper coaching changed over the years since you guys first started? Have you seen a shift in, um, in what the focus is on? Or is it, uh, is it, is it kind of the, the same just with different flavours? What do you think, Matthias? I think it's uh, it's getting more and more complicated, more and more complex. Let's say like that, it's more and more complex. The players are much better uh, than they were. The game is getting faster. Uh, they have more uh, options when they're shooting. Uh, many teams are playing uh, with different defenses. You have a lot of things to take in consideration when you prepare the keepers and uh, the keepers have to have to know so many things and uh, I think uh, it's getting or it's always been complex but it's getting a lot more complex as well due to the that the, uh, that the players are getting that good. Okay. Nico? Yeah it's it's well, that's true that's uh, it's more complex and um, uh, for uh, I don't know, 20 years, uh, I saw that uh, the, go the, go the head coaches didn't, uh, uh, didn't speak a lot with, uh, with the goalkeepers. I, 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 of course, I, I uh, had a couple of head coaches and uh, they're all different. And uh, it's nice if you have a good communication and uh, if you can... Uh, uh, make uh, some um, some good stuff for you. If you it's also good for your preparation and how how they plan with you and uh, what we do and uh, one guy is more on the on the field or or seven against six or something like this. But it's 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 complex and uh, you should. Uh, I think it's a, a communication should be in in future much much better and uh, i think it's a position of a uh, goalkeeper trainer should uh, allow this uh, better communication uh, i had one example is uh, i, I play with Betzla and uh, goalkeeper coach is uh, yasmin chamjic um, and uh, he was uh, had a very big trust from uh, from a head coach and uh, he makes some stuff with us or as a preparation or with the, also with tactical whole team and uh, you you are you're so secure and you know what's what's your uh, what's your role in in this game or or in this part of the game and uh, that makes you more confident in such a situation and uh, it's not uh, during the game some uh, discussion why you did that or something like this or you know, we we do our stuffs. So we we spoken, and uh, everybody are, are concentrate of uh, his stuffs. If uh, uh, goals happens, happens. So we we should analyze that after the game, but not during the game. That's uh, I think it's a it's the role of uh, uh, of the handball goalkeeper really really important uh, in in future. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting to talk about, to hear you guys talk about how how much uh, connection is required for the goalkeeper to be connected with the team and the head coach and the goalkeeper coach working together, uh, not working in separation. Of course, there are times when we need to maybe spend some time looking at maybe some uh, some physical things outside and um, I don't know some individual work, but certainly connecting the, the goalkeeper with the team and uh, as Matthias said, the complexity of the uh, of the game because we need to prepare goalkeepers for the game and not for isolated uh, scenarios. 
Um, Ricardo, I'm just aware, guys, we're, yep. we're coming to three o'clock. So uh, if Matthias and Nico, if it's okay, we'll just take a, a few questions from the uh, from the chat box. And then if you guys need to leave, you just tell us, uh, but we'll go until you guys are, are, are ready. Yeah, keep it coming. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of questions about different themes. The first one, touching the one you were you were just discussing about the data uh, and the information you pass on to uh, the goalkeepers in your case, Matthias, and that the information that you receive in your case, uh, when you're preparing a game, how do you select what's important, what's relevant? Uh, so you observe, say, 10 games from a team that's going to face yours. How do you go through the process of selection of what's relevant to your goalkeepers, Matthias, and what's relevant to you, uh, Nicola, when you're observing the game? First of all, I ask the goalkeeper what, what they want to see. Uh, I can't tell the goalkeepers what they should do. I have to ask them, what do you want to see? Do you want clips? Do you want whole games? Uh, how many games do you want? How many clips do you want? Uh, and then I take it from there because everyone has their own way of preparing. I need, just need to make sure that they are giving the, the stuff to be prepared. After that, of course, we talk about it. Some keepers want to talk about it, the goalkeeper coach and the both keepers. Some would like to talk it individually because you don't want to hear too much of some other or other person's opinion. Uh, I stay away from telling them too much stuff. I want them to find out themselves. Uh, I want them to get the feeling because they are playing in the goal, not me. Uh, I just need to know, for most, I need to know the week before the game. How should I prepare them for what's coming in the game? Although maybe they don't know it, but what shots do, you want, what do I want them to be prepared for? Uh, I also want to have the information so that I do in the game, uh, either on the bench or if I'm on the, in the stands in the, in the half time to be able to give one or two tips, uh, not more, because then it's, it's too much. Uh, you don't want them to feel that they have to do the stuff that I am saying, but uh, you, you want to give them the feeling that they are prepared. Thank you. Yeah, Matthias said there's a very, very good stuff, so a lot of, a lot of stuff. So, um, of course, so again, uh, again, communication, you should speak so with your, with your uh, guys with your goalkeepers and uh, uh, maybe you should uh, to to discuss some uh, couple of stuff to you that you see and you maybe find it that's uh, that's important as it's uh, uh, some some stuff to the couple of a time during the game uh, came uh, from from one player or for some player but you you should also ask uh, the goalkeepers, uh, how they look on on this uh, situation from his angle, and uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I think it's as a, you you should uh, speak oftenly and uh, just to, to to share your share your experience with them. Thanks, Nico. Uh, guys, just another one. Uh, this one a bit different. Um, it has to do with the schools, so there's different schools of goalkeepers, uh, as you know. Uh, how do you behave as coaches when your schools are coming from, or do you focus on them as, as goalkeepers without having that connection with the school on the back of your, of your head, if that makes sense? I focus on them, of them to save the ball. Uh, in the, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't care if they're saving one hand or two hands, uh, but uh, of course you you can train, uh, you have to take in consideration their background, their technique, uh, their skills, their, their, their problems or their struggles. Uh, but in the end, you can train the goalkeepers uh, in the same way, although they save the ball in different ways. Um, that's, that would be my, my take on that. Perfect, thank you. Nicola? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's important this, uh, that you see what uh, what for potential, what for material you have in this goalkeeper, and what uh, he can already do, and uh, just to to make this better, his uh, his movement or his technique, is not uh, to to uh, try him to to say as you have to do like this. So, so, uh, yeah, of course, so if they have a potential for this movement or for this technique, so you should try to 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 
see if, if uh, how how long it takes to to take this as a technique and to to make it really good. And uh, but uh, the most important is, is to save the ball. And uh, yeah, after that uh, you with with uh, some technical moves you can uh, maybe as uh, have some uh, more opportunities if they do good but uh yeah everybody every every goalkeeper is special and individual and have some special moves and you should uh, uh, you should uh, let him uh, to do his his stuff yeah? thank you um yeah just the the another one and then bobby i'll i'll uh, let you carry on uh, so someone asks a very specific question about young goalkeepers and their technique. Um, they're raising the, the fact that a lot of goalkeepers um, move their feet a lot and jump a lot and raise the legs a lot at early stages without that weighting you were advocating at the start, mainly from the wings. Uh, is there any tip, any advice you would give a goalkeeper coach when working with young players to try and um, you know, improve that, that side of things? I think it also has to do with that uh, they often uh, look at other goalkeepers, uh, grown-ups doing that, and it looks it's cool saves, uh, and uh, it looks good. But uh, I think as well, like I said before, maybe try to slow the training down a bit so they do it uh, with the right technique to be very specific uh, or just to be uh, accurate about to train the, the right technique and not uh, doing the training that fast or that so they learn the wrong technique but to slow it down a bit uh, go back to basic and uh, show them your thoughts and maybe uh, show them uh, also one or two clips of the keepers that are doing it in in your opinion right to show them that it's not just uh, not just about about the cool save it's a really interesting uh, question and it's making me think about some goalkeepers that are playing in the top level who are uh, maybe exceptional in terms of their physical characteristics, uh, maybe very, very tall, uh, much taller than even Nico. Uh, that, that, uh, they're not uh, waiting on the, on the player, they're making the shapes early, but they're having some success. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any comments on, on those uh, types of situations. I didn't really understand. Yeah, I, I, you take Nico. I didn't really understand the question. Okay, so I was just talking about how some goalkeepers they may be relying too much on their physical uh, size, and they can afford, like you were talking about before, the, the young guys they see the goalkeepers that are jumping and um, making these big, nice, spectacular saves. But maybe it, it's because some goalkeepers they can afford to do that because they're two meters and ten or two meters and five, and they have this, uh, yeah this extra capacity where they can take up more more space and force the, the, the shooters into um, yeah more problems basically I think that's that's off can be a problem with bigger goalkeepers uh, that are very big in the when they are young because they don't have to learn it the right way they are getting hit with the ball anyway uh, I think that's something that's uh, that's not always that easy to to address uh, I never had the problem. It was always small. Maybe Nico has better <laughs> insight to that. So maybe through the legs or something like this. <laughs> uh, from the back players. Yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 uh, every, every goalkeeper had his uh, good size and bad size. Of course, they have some, uh, some possibilities more if you are taller or you are faster if you are smaller. That's, uh, then comes the technique. Uh, uh, plus and uh, yeah, it's um, it's difficult to say. Uh, but it's it, you are started with with this uh, jumping and uh, uh, some couple of uh, the defenses, the attractive. But uh, that's a couple of uh, attractive defenses. I, I think it's uh, it's more important that you you have as a good position game uh, position. Uh, play in, in your uh, in the game and you stay good and if you if you have a quite normal uh, defense they with blocking and uh, some situation you should came on on one uh, number of 10 the 10 balls per game and uh, I think it's more important that you make your stuffs quite good as a not attractive or something like this 
and then came if you are good in the flow and then came as two seven meters one counter attack to attractive and then you have a great game with 17 18 20 balls uh, that's if you don't have this basis on, on eight till ten balls with uh, with the defense together you should save your three or four attractive balls but it's not uh, not that what you want huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing uh, a lot about basic effect, effect being effective. You know, we, we can all have our own style of goalkeeping, our own way to save the ball. You just have to stop it from going over the line. And uh, and, and that's pretty much the job. Um, Ricardo, unless there's anything else uh, yeah. pressing from the... There's one more that, there's one more that just popped up. It was, it was um, I think, interesting. Uh, a coach, uh, so I'm guessing he's, he's a goalkeeper coach or a, or a head coach, he's asking... Um, what informs his decision of changing goalkeepers? Uh, so what informs your decision about when to change the goalkeeper that's playing? Is it all about his level of, you know, degree of success whilst in goal? Is it all about statistics or do you have any kind of model that or, or frame that would inform your decisions when to change the goalkeeper? Yeah, first of all, you know, you have two goalkeepers, uh, you know, the difference between them. Uh, as well, if it's a uh, uh, difference, how good they are or how they're playing against certain opponents or with, with certain defenses. Uh, but uh, I try to, when I'm a goalkeeper coach or when I'm coaching, I always try to, to follow the game to get a feeling for is the goalkeeper in the game. Uh, like I said before, not just uh, uh, count the goals or count the shots, but see what kind of shots are, are he conceding. Uh, well, then as well, you had the consideration sometimes you had to change the goalkeeper, even if you had the feeling that he's okay, but maybe we're behind with three, uh, or maybe we're playing really good defense and he still doesn't get the saves he should get, but he's okay, then you can try something. Uh, that's a very complex uh, decision and it's also the, the hardest decision to take, but I think you have to, to find a way to, to realize as well what kinds of goal are we conceding. Uh, and when how do we have the feeling that the keeper is not in the game anymore? Okay, Nicola, do you have any uh, vision on this in terms of? Yeah, I I, I worked in uh, in uh, in Wetzlar in uh, some system. Um, yeah, of course, I I I agree with everything what uh, what Matthias said uh, because uh, that's of course uh, you do complex. <laughs> yeah. It's complex because it's. Uh, you you have a uh, one goalkeeper team and uh, that's uh, two two goalkeepers and uh, sometimes you have uh, just one there is really good and they play all the time but uh, he can do also also he had also a bad day and uh, you have a problem or how to be equal to to, to both uh, guys and um, we uh, so we we have uh, some uh, target how many balls we we should uh, save and it was for example 12 and uh if you play then we uh then you'll see for per 15 minutes you should save three balls and to 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 stay in the game of course if your first goalkeeper have maybe more credit at the goal uh, by by the head coach or by the goalkeeper coach and he can stay maybe a couple of, of minutes uh, longer in a goal. But uh, that was quite fair uh, if you have a two, two equal goalkeepers or for quality. But uh, that's just as a, one example uh, what I... Uh, what I, uh, uh, in, in Wetzla... How, how Wetzla do his stops with the goalkeepers, yeah. It's interesting to see a different perspective when it's not just done on a on a feeling, but you've got a set framework of when you're looking to make the changes and uh, yeah, some uh, some prediction of what they should be saving in in the time frame. Very interesting. Um, so guys, this is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to save the the chat box and pick out some questions that haven't been answered, and I'm going to share them with Matthias and Nicola. See if we can get some uh, some responses on those, so we can. We can share them out on the debrief email. Um, I'm just going to uh, say a big thank you to Matthias and Nicola now. Uh, really, really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us and, and the audience. And I'm going to give you guys just uh, one more opportunity to say something to the to the audience. Some best bit of advice for goalkeepers or uh, best bit of advice for a goalkeeper coach. 
So, uh, Matthias, we'll start with you. Uh, I think either for I think it's for the goalkeeper coaches it's important to install the like I said the commitment in the goalkeepers and uh, also the easiest tip for me is always have them watching a lot of handball and then uh, when we train train the things we're doing in the game don't try to make up any fun exercises or other stuff so keep it simple train with how we play. Perfect. Thanks, Matthias. And uh, Nicola? Yeah, that was uh, the, the, <laughs> the same advice I got from my first uh, really famous goalkeeper from Zlatan Rotovic, and that is uh, everything what you do in, in training, uh, uh, do like you have to do in the goal. And some movement or something, if you don't need the goal, you don't need it. Uh, and that's uh, sometimes stay in in your head and uh, i think uh, you have to be patient that's a long way it's a, to be a good goalkeeper it's a one marathon run and uh, yeah of course it gives us some uh, couple of uh, great talents they are already with uh, with 15 or 16 of the great in, in goal or young age but uh, as a goalkeeper you have uh, one long career for you and uh, you if you train good and if you if you analyze good and uh, uh, you will read the, the game better and you will from uh, uh, like like a red wine you will better and better perfect words uh nico thank you so much um guys that's the end of the the goalkeeper webinar thank you again for joining us um we've got our next webinar on uh, Friday, which is at three o'clock uh, English time, London time. Uh, we hope to see you there. Thanks again. All the best, everybody.